Hey guys, Domestic Ginger here. Um, I actually don't know if I've ever shown my face on here after all these years. Um, anyway, so thank you for a thousand subscribers. Um, I just reached it, I think, a week or so ago. I don't post much up on here. My life is so crazy. So anyway, today I wanted to talk to you guys about Cash App and how they make their money. Now, Cash App is an app similar to like PayPal and Venmo so that you can transfer money to somebody. You know, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, um, you know, money sharing. Like if you go out with a friend, um, go out to eat, and one pays for dinner, and you know, the other one, they don't want to split the check. so. One just says, oh, I'll just send you my share through Cash App. Or, you know, maybe there's roommates where one is writing a check for their rent and the other one says, hey, let me just Cash App you my share of the rent. The thing with Cash App is they don't want any responsibility for anything. But the thing is, is when you, when you build an app, especially one where you make money off of it, you should be held responsible for what happens on that app. In this day and age, there are scammers everywhere and they're always coming up with new tactics. Cash App is the friendliest money sharing uh, way for scammers to use. It is, it is completely scammer friendly. It's I actually believe it's made for scammers because scamming um, is actually how Cash App makes a majority of their money. Now I want to preface the, this by saying that if you get scammed, um, the majority of the time it's your fault because you got duped. But there are instances where it's not the person's fault that they got scammed. Like. Um, elderly people, you know, people with dementia or like, uh, you know, people who really aren't mentally capable of figuring out that someone is scamming them. There are so many scammers out there every single day scamming people. Let's just, for instance, say that there are 10,000 scammers a day, although I know that there's probably more than 10,000. but. Let's say, for instance, is 10,000 people a day getting scammed on Cash App. Well, Cash App charges a 1.5% instant transfer fee. So let's say a victim sends $200 to the scammer, thinking that it's for goods. Well, that scammer doesn't actually have the goods. They're never going to send the goods, and they're never going to speak to the victim again because they got their money. Which route do you think that the scammer is going to take? There are two options. They can either wait the one to three days for the money to hit their bank account, which would be the full $200, or they can pay, since it's 1.5%, they can pay um, $3 and end up getting $197 instantly. Well, they don't want that money sitting in their cash app because that'll give the victim time to try to get their money back once they realize they've been scammed. And the scammers don't care, it's not their money, so they're willing to let go of $3 so that they can get 197 So like I said, for instance, 10,000 people, well, 10,000 scammers doing that a day, that's $30,000 a day that Cash App is making off of scammers. It is way, way more than 10000 a day, but that was just an example. They're probably making at least $100,000 or more a day just off of scammers doing the instant transfer and paying the fee. But here's also another way that Cash App is totally for scammers. Because they don't want their cash cows to disappear, you know, the scammers, what they do is not only do they allow you to change your name first and last on the app, but you can change your handle. Your handle is basically um, what people type in when they want to send you money. So it'll be like the dollar sign and then your name. Let's say 
uh, your username is Bullwinkle. So it will be um, the dollar sign in Bullwinkle. And that's what people will put in when they want to send you money. Now you can't just put in any old name for the handle. It has to be available. But you can change it, your name and your handle, as much as you want. So when, let's say, the scammer is Bullwinkle, you send a dollar sign Bullwinkle $200, then once they got your money, what are they going to do? They're going to change their name. Also, they can change their user picture, but that's not a big deal. Um, but they're also going to change their handle. So now, instead of dollar sign Bullwinkle, they are dollar sign Rocky227. So that way they can just move on to the next scammer. The only thing that doesn't change is that when you log into your Cash App um, as the victim, you can see that they changed their username as well as their handle. So you're still able to go in and try to like ask for a refund, although when it comes to scammers, if you type in their their handle and request money from them, it'll literally say unable to request funds from this person. Please ask them to pay cash. When you report the scammer to Cash App, Cash App does not give you your money back. They don't even try. All they do is press request refund, which is something some of the time you can do yourself. On my end, I couldn't request a refund when I was scammed. So Cash App went ahead and did that. But what scammer is going to give you back your money? The fact that you're allowed to change your name, you're allowed to change your handle, you're allowed to make it so that people can't request refunds or request money from you, it makes it super easy for a scammer to keep on scamming people. If Cash App got rid of all the scammers, guess what? The majority of their revenue would completely disappear. Like I got scammed, so that's on me. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to work hard at trying to get this scammer so that it's one less scammer out there scamming other people. So I contacted Cash App later on um, trying to be like, why is this person still on there? Because I have already reported the person and nothing happened with the report. They didn't investigate. They didn't do anything. Even though they say, hey, we're going to investigate it. No, they're not. Why would they investigate and ban where their money comes from? That would be stupid, right? What Cash App is doing is receiving stolen money. So Cash App needs to be held responsible. They know these scammers are scamming. There are reports. There's no way in this world that the person who scammed me hadn't been reported by other people. Because I have access, because I've given them money, um, I have access to be able to still view their account. So I see every time they change their name and every time they change their handle. Every time they change those, that means that they have scammed somebody and they change their information so they can get ready to scam someone else. So when they're doing this a couple of times a day, guess what? They're still on there, they're getting scammed, and I know for a fact people are out here pressing the report button on Cash App and Cash App isn't doing anything about it because that's where their money comes from. They can't sit there and say they don't know because they do know. Cash App likes to play the whole, oh, we just wanted an, to build an app where people can just share money with each other. Well, what do you think PayPal is for? PayPal has been around forever. So it's not like they're, they're innocent and they don't know what's going on. They do know what's going on and they're profiting from it. So when grandma is on Facebook Marketplace looking for, let's say, a new fridge because hers broke and a scammer posts um, a fridge for sale on Facebook and offers delivery, you know, grandma's going to sit there and be all like, oh, this is great. Let me cash app you so that you can, you know, deliver the fridge to me. And then there's no fridge being delivered to grandma and she's out several hundred dollars and that means that not only did the scammer steal from grandpa or grandma but so did cash app 
Cash App doesn't care that they stole money from a sweet old lady because that's just a couple extra dollars in their pocket. I've also heard of other people getting scammed in other ways to where um, scammers will will contact somebody over, I don't, I don't know what it's for, um, but contact somebody and be like, hey, um, what's your phone number so that um, I know that you're real or whatever. And then somehow the scammer uses the phone number to log into that person's cash app. And then they steal all the money from that person's account. So your phone number isn't even safe. I watched a video earlier today where that happened to one woman and she had, I think, uh, like $1,200 or something stolen from her account. And then the scammer just transferred it to their, I guess, their cash app and then got all the money from the account. So it's not just measly little $200 that they're stealing, they're stealing thousands. So for every $1,200 that is being stolen, cash app is making 18 off of it. So imagine 10,000 scammers a day uh, stealing $1,200 from people and Cash App getting $18. That's $180,000 that Cash App is making a day. It's just absolutely insane how much money Cash App is making just from scammer fees. I've already unlinked all of my bank accounts and cards. I'm no longer going to be using Cash App. I am keeping my account up on there though, just so that I can keep an eye on the scammer. I also did a dispute with my bank and I let Cash App know. I said, hey, since you guys didn't try to find a way to refund my money, um, and then I reported the person and you guys decided that you're not going to ban the scammer, so I went ahead and contacted my bank and I did um, a chargeback. I got my two, my money back. So, because I got it through my bank. So I don't know how that works. If your bank disputes a certain amount um, for you, who pays it? Is it insurance or is it um, they're getting that money from Cash App? So it's getting taken out of Cash App as Cash App's pockets and then Cash App has to find a way to get their money back from the scammer. I don't know how that works but those are just a couple things that might happen. It's either insurance or getting it through Cash App or taken out of a Cash App's pockets. To tell you what happened when I got scammed, um, so we had just bought a new house so we're kind of we don't have the money we once had, so we're trying to get furniture for this house and everything, and my husband has, um, well, it has, the house has two living rooms, one upstairs, one down, and the upstairs living room is being turned into my husband's man cave. So what does he need up there? A couch. So I'm like looking for cheap couches for like two, three hundred dollars on Facebook Marketplace. So I went through a bunch of people trying to get a couch and a lot of them were real people really selling them and uh, some people either didn't want to go down on some prices or um, it was already pending. So then I saw the couch that uh, someone was selling here. Now this was the scammer. I highly doubt the scammer lives here. But the scammer knew a lot of information about uh, about the area that we live in. Now, my husband is active duty military, so he works here um, on post. And this person said that her I had I didn't mention this, but she goes, "Oh yeah, my husband's in the military. He works on post," and she mentioned some stuff that you think that only you would know about this post. Like we had a lengthy, probably half an hour conversation before I even sent her any money. 
she seemed legit she like i said she was she knew about the area she knew about stuff on post and she seemed like another military wife she talked about her job and where she works um gave me her address of where she lives so that i could pick it up i googled the address the address was legit but then this is where i got caught so instead of her or well like me coming to go pick it up because I said hey it's gonna be later because I have to wait until my husband gets home so that we can run down and get it she said that her husband uh, was off and that he could deliver it all we needed to do was you know she was like hey this is my cash app um, and then he could be there to deliver it I said great by the time he gets here my husband will be home and he can help him um, bring it in the house so I sent the money and then it took me a couple hours to finally realize hey they didn't show up um, we got scammed my husband on the other hand he he had high hopes he was like oh well maybe they got in an accident or something there was an accident on the highway I'm like no um, we got scammed well I got scammed from the outside looking in you're like yeah that was really stupid but when you're in the moment and you're having a conversation with somebody and you know they seem like an actual legit person um, you know you seem to think that they're telling the truth but the thing is is I should have just said you know what no we'll just try to go with another couch because I'm not going to um, pay you money if I haven't seen the product or even met you yet. This is one of the reasons why I never order anything off of any online um, websites or any advertisements that I see on TikTok or wherever else um, unless I already know that it's a legit company like I will order from Walmart and Target. I will order from Bradford Exchange, um, Lakeside Collections. And then when I order off of Amazon, I make sure that it is something that is shipped by Amazon because if it is something that is sold by a company and shipped by a company, I do not um, I do not order from those because I already learned that uh, a few years back that those are also scammers too. And then when I, if I order off of eBay. Um, it has to be someone who has close to 100% positive reviews. They have to have a lot of reviews. And I go and look at all those reviews. No matter how much that I want an item, I am not going to order something if I think it might be a little bit sketchy. But I'm not complaining about the fact that I got scammed. I'm just telling you how I got scammed and it was my fault I take responsibility for it but cash app needs to be held responsible for knowing about these scammers and continuing allowing these scammers on their app making money off of these scammers and then allowing these scammers to change their name and change their handle to make it easier so that they don't get caught this also is another issue is that um, I've actually, since I fell down this rabbit hole, I've been learning that a lot of people, and I mean a lot, have been dealing with the fact that Cash App just takes their money. They will have hundreds or even thousands of dollars in there, just sitting in their Cash App account, and out of nowhere, Cash App closes their account and steals all their money. Cash App refuses to return their money to them and just keeps it. See, at any moment, Cash App can just shut your account down and take all your money in it and they do not have to refund you that well in a sense they do but they illegally keep it but they know that you're not going to do anything about it they know that people will try to do something about it in a sense but it gets to a point where they're just so exhausted from trying to get their money back that they just eventually give up and boom cash app gets to keep their money cash app is a scam cash app loves scammers I believe the owner is probably one of those people who used to scam 
uh, people on phone lines calling little old ladies up saying, hey, there's a virus on your computer, pay me $200 um, in Target gift cards and I'll get the virus off for you. So good advice is to just unlink all your cards, get rid of your cash app. Don't use cash app. And if you happen to just keep using it, never, ever, ever leave your money in there. Always instant tra transfer it because at any moment they could just steal your money.